let's have a discussion about building customer relationship and loyalty for your service organization. And this is part of study unit nine, chapter 13. A few learning outcomes that we will cover. Define the term relationship and explain the importance of relationship marketing. Discuss trust and commitment as elements of a relationship. Discuss the various types or levels of customers from a relationship building perspective. Explain the relationship building process in service organizations. Justify the importance of customer retention to service organizations and explain the components of retention. We will also have a look at discussing customer satisfaction and its relevance for services marketing. And then lastly, comment on the nature and importance of customer lifetime value. On the next slide, you will see a video and this is quite funny. Please have a look at this video as you will find it both entertaining and maybe this is a view that you will have as a customer. Basically, one person, the male, will impersonate a service organization and the female, the customer. And this is quite funny, as I mentioned, so make sure you watch this video. Let's have a look at a brief introduction for all of the content that we will cover. Most organizations realize that the satisfied customers can and often defect, meaning that they will leave to your competitors and never return. When this happens, they stop buying their services from their current service provider, that's you, and spread negative word of mouth to other people. So you, as a service organization, need to make sure this never happens. There is thus great incentive for all organizations and service organizations in particular to determine how to retain customers so they continue using the organization's services. And we will have a look at customer retention in some detail, as well as discuss some tactics a bit later on. In other words, there should be an emphasis that service organizations not only compete in respect of the products or services that they sell, but also in terms of the relationships that they want or aim to build with their customers making relationships that they build a potential competitive advantage for an organization. If I refer to a personal example, I can go to clicks or I can go to my family pharmacy in the area where I stay because my medical aid covers both. Of course, clicks is in a position to offer cheaper products and I will pay less for certain medication there. But the relationship I have built with my family pharmacy and the pharmacist and staff there outweighs the cheaper prices that I can get from clicks because at clicks you cannot really build a personal relationship with the person attending to your needs or the pharmacist because it is more a mechanized or a machine that you go through instead of building your personal relationship and building that care and trust with your family pharmacist and if you can relate to this you know exactly what i mean so as a service organization focusing on building a relationship might outweigh the price that you offer in terms of your products and services and this is very vital so what is the role of services in relationships the first question that has to be answered relates to the link between services and customer relationship and i just mentioned with my personal example that there's a clear link between building a relationship and offering your service. Services are very different from products and customers as a result will evaluate them differently during the decision making process. With products you can look at attributes but with services this is a bit more unambiguous and it is a bit more difficult as we also covered. So providing quality service is essential if an organization wants to build a relationship with a customer. So if you have a quality service to start with it will draw in customers. But down the road, it might be the relationship that keeps your customers coming back and not necessarily the quality of your service. And this is especially true if your services are purely intangible. So this means that service and service quality are not only important in creating satisfied customers because they get what they paid for, but also a very important prerequisite for successful relationship building. So having a quality service will be the building block to establishing and building and maintaining quality relationships with your customers, which as I again mentioned and emphasized, might be a major reason why they return. 
having a look at the first few learning outcomes and all of these are covered under the concept of the nature and components of customer relationship. In terms of the nature of customer relationship, all customers do not necessarily establish long-term relationship with all the organizations that they deal with. For example, I will have a personal or formed relationship with my personal pharmacist, but this might not be the case at the service station where I fill up on gas and pump my wheels. It's not the same. Interacting with an organization on a once-off basis would not constitute a customer relationship. And one very effective relatable example to the youth is that if you go out on a date and it happens once but you never speak to the person again, does it constitute a relationship? No, it does not. And this is the same with a service organization. If you are on vacation and you need to fill up gas, it's not a relationship that you will build. If you go to a company to have your hair done because it's the only appointment that you could get, this would not constitute a customer relationship if you just go there once. A customer relationship between a service organization and a customer exists when two conditions or preconditions are met. And first, both parties must believe that a relationship exists. And second, the contact between them must be more than simply occasional. So if you have a family pharmacy, if you have a daycare for your children, if for your brothers or sisters, if you go to the same hair salon at the same individual that cuts and does your hair or your nails, a beautician, anything like that, both parties must believe, obviously, that the relationship exists. So both would expect there's a set appointment and then naturally at most of these occurrences there's some discussion that happens and you start to build a relationship. And then the contact between you and your service organization, whether it's your beautician or your pharmacy, is more than just occasional. So this is the place that you go occasionally, more than occasionally, for the same type of service. Now, there are also two main components of a relationship, and this is trust and commitment. And again, we can relate this to our personal human relationship with parents, with our brothers and sisters, our broader family, our closer significant other, a husband, boyfriend, fiance, girlfriend, wife, anything like that. Let's have a look at trust. Trust is defined as the belief in the reliability and integrity of the other party. So as I continue with the description of trust and commitment, think of a personal relationship and how you can relate that to that of a service organization that you might have a relationship with and establish whether there is trust in that relationship. Based on the definition of trust, it means that parties rely and believe each other and that they will not exploit one another. Trust in a relationship means that the parties will not act opportunistically. In other words, the parties to a relationship will not exploit the relationship or behave in a way that puts the other party to a disadvantage or upset them. And this is true for any relationship, whether it's personal or with a service organization. What must also be remembered is that while the customer must trust the organization, it is also important that the organization trust the customer, which doesn't necessarily always happen because we as a customer do not have a written commitment or there's no expectation of, for example, you are booking a holiday. If you don't want to go or you cannot go, you can just simply request a refund. So it is difficult for an organization to trust a customer because of this past behavior. Examples of trust can be seen in an organization's return policy. Some organizations do not allow products to be exchanged at all except for supplying a credit notice. If you go to any Chinese shop, you will see that they have no refunds or returns. Many other organizations or businesses like clothing stores or massive shops like Game or Macro, they have a return policy in place because they know that if the customer is not satisfied, they should feel free within reason. And that's why there needs to be a policy because there are rules. You have 14 days or three months or it's, it's stipulated in their return policy meaning that they trust the customer to return the product in its original packaging, in original resellable condition with their proof of purchase. But to continue on this point, some stores seal all shopping bags upon entry or require the customers to hand their shopping bags in at the parcel counter. But then there needs to be a mutual trust in this relationship. And then again, some of them close them off and some don't because they trust their customers. Commitment on the other hand, 
is defined or described as an ongoing relationship with another party that requires maximum effort in retaining it. If the parties are committed to one another, they will do whatever is necessary to keep the relationship intact. So if you go to your family pharmacist or your beautician, your regular beautician or the salon where you do your hair or cut your hair for the guys, they will try to establish a relationship and make sure that you return. And there needs to be a commitment and this will be followed through if there is an existing relationship instead of going to a new beautician or a new pharmacy every time. Customers who are committed are those who have an effective preference towards the organization, meaning that they are willing to stay in the relationship as they perceive it to be better than other service organizations. And that's why I go to my family pharmacist instead of bigger corporations like Clicks. But then, as with any personal relationship, a relationship cannot flourish or develop when only one party is committed or when there's only a one-way trust. So make sure you know the difference between these two concepts or components of a relationship. There are also two main types of relationships that we need to refer to. And as you can see, this is a true relationship or a spurious or false relationship. A true relationship is a long-term relationship characterized by positive behaviors between the organization and the client. Examples of positive behavior include positive word of mouth and purchase behavior. Characteristics of true relationships include the presence of trust, relationship benefits and the absence of negative bonds. For a true relationship, it is mutually beneficial. But a spurious relationship, on the other hand, is quite the opposite. This means that a spurious relationship has the opposite characteristics of a true relationship. And these types of relationships occur when the customer has little trust in the organization or when there isn't a strong bond with the organization. So to provide the personal example, I have a true relationship with my personal pharmacy and pharmacists, but I have a spurious relationship with the pharmacist and clicks as a pharmacy. Under these circumstances, now referring to a spurious relationship, the customer is not or cannot be expected to support the organization. Thus, when there is absence of trust, Neither the client nor the organization wishes to remain in the relationship and satisfaction levels decrease. Hence, stick to an organization, a service organization specifically, where you can trust the owners or the staff that work there or the brand or company as a whole. Now we will look at building customer relationship or a process of building customer relationship. And this is illustrated in a figure, but let's describe this process in our own words. A customer relationship does not happen instantly, but develops over an extended period of time in the same way that other relationships develop. So this is to say relationship is a process and we know this from personal relationships and even if you have relationship with certain service organizations. And this is where a process happens where each party gets to know the other and to ensure that both parties realize their goals. So you expect quality service from your pharmacy and they expect your loyalty and your continuous support. And this can be actually calculated and we will get to customer lifetime value at the end of this lesson. You will see the figure on the screen where they illustrate customer relationship as a process. So on top, you will see the inputs of this relationship. And this is the customer expectations, customer co-creation and service quality. So this is kind of the starting point of the relationship building process between the customer and the service organization. A customer expects quality service and the service quality itself is the starting point because as I mentioned, that's why many customers return and also customer co-creation. Moving on to the outcomes of this process, what is typically an outcome of, of a relationship? Customer retention, customer satisfaction and customer loyalty. So if your expectations are met, your co-creation is valued and the service quality is exceptional for you to return, you will be retained, you will be satisfied and you will remain loyal to the service organization. But what is the spark in essence for that? So organizations will have certain strategies in place. For example, they have a strategy to provide quality service, but also the actions and the willingness and drive to provide exceptional service quality and foster co-creation and deliver on the customer expectations. And that is why the strategies should be based on customer expectations and facilitate co-creation and be grounded in quality service. 
and then also the actions will lead to the customer retention satisfaction and loyalty as an outcome of this process let's have a bit more detail on co-creation co-creation can be referred to as involving customers as participants in the production of a product or a service let's refer to my personal pharmacy or family pharmacy they have a whatsapp number I can send them a message, decide which medications I need this month, and that is my inputs in terms of co-creation, of placing the order for my specific medication. And then this is a strategy that they have in place, and the action would be to prepare my meds and notify me when it's ready for collection, as well as provide me with the invoice for the said medication. In terms of co-creation, it is the joint creation of value between the organization and the customer and the creation of an experience environment in which customers can have an active dialogue or bringing the customer's view to achieve the beneficial outcomes with the firm at the point of consumption and the experience. So if we converse by means of my WhatsApp order system, then we are co-creating the service together where they minimize the traffic in their pharmacy because they can already prepare the medication and I don't have to stand in a queue, leaving me very satisfied and definitely wanting to return. The outcome of co-creation basically is that you as a customer will experience more value because you will provide input to the process. And then again, customers are involved in generating value together with the service organization and by involving the customer, they experience more value. As I just discussed, they have more creative ideas that are produced. Therefore, if you provide input as a customer, the service organization will get more ideas that they might not have thought of. And that way they can service more customers because of these creative ideas like ordering via WhatsApp. And then the organization can improve the bonds that exist and so build deeper relationship with their customers because then they definitely look at customer expectations and making sure they continuously satisfy them. In order to understand some of these outcomes in the relationship building process, we will have a look at relationship outcomes specifically. The first one of note is customer retention and in short, this is retaining your customers and there are several tactics that we will touch on a bit later but there are definitely valuable benefits of keeping your existing customers. The first one is profitability. It is often claimed that an organization that is able to increase its customer retention by only 5% can increase its profitability by between 20% and 125%, depending on the type of organization and industry. Because remember, loyal customers and satisfied customers spend more money. In terms of cost issues, it is cheaper to retain your existing customers than it is to continually attract new customers because this is a lot of promotional efforts and costs and your existing customers are already familiar with your service offering and processes. The sales effect of loyal customers that I just touched on, loyal customers tend to spend more money on the organization's products and brands than those who are not loyal because they go to competitors for cheaper products because they are not loyal yet. There's also an increase in your brand equity and this refers to the customer subjective and intangible evaluation of your brand. Customers who have a longer association with the organization are more likely to view the brand in a positive way and then use word of mouth to tell everyone else about your organization. Components of customer retention and the first one is customer satisfaction and loyalty and we refer to attitudinal and behavioral loyalty but then also customer relationships in terms of the first component customer satisfaction and loyalty so what is satisfaction it is the meeting of customer expectations and delivering on the promises made by the actual service delivery process again if customers are not satisfied they will be reluctant to continue building a relationship with the service provider and they will move on to competitors loyalty can be defined as the willingness of a customer to keep buying from and supporting a specific outlet store or service provider in the long term Loyalty can also be defined as an attitude that sometimes leads to a relationship with the brand. Yes, it might be that you are loyal to a specific organization, but don't necessarily have a solid and deep relationship with that service organization or the staff. You as a service organization owner need to keep in mind that customers will only stay loyal for as long as they believe that they are receiving value that they wouldn't be getting elsewhere. And this is not necessarily cheaper products or services. It might be that relationship that you build and keep with them. 
looking at attitudinal versus behavioral loyalty. So attitudinal loyalty is an effective state that refers to the loyalty that the customer has towards the organization in his or her mind. The customer may have attitudinal loyalty towards an organization but may never buy there because it is not convenient. So you might prefer or like a specific organization. I like clicks for all of the other products but not necessarily the pharmacy. So I have a positive attitudinal loyalty towards clicks as a service organization. Behavioral loyalty, on the other hand, refers to the actions that the customer displays. This means that the customer might support an organization on a regular basis, for instance, because it is conveniently located. What are some of the tactics that you can use to retain your customers? And we refer to three main suggested tactics. First, you want to provide excellent customer service and a quality service. And as a result, you will delight your customers. Delighting your customer implies exceeding their expectations and exceeding the expectation will reduce the defection rate, meaning that they will not leave. They are reluctant to leave and stay. A second one is knowing and measuring the current defection rate. So if you know that your customers are leaving at a steady rate, you need to determine how many do not stay and go to the competitors. You also have to conduct research into reasons for customer defection and that's always important to have just a quick feedback survey on the counter after they paid or received the service to know that what you can improve, what they weren't satisfied with, and then actively change those things to make sure that they are satisfied. A third one is making sure you listen to your customers, and this is regarded by many as the best way to reduce customer defections. People as consumers, and this you should relate to as a customer yourself, you like it when a service organization is involved and really care to what you are saying and actually listen to what you are saying and then actually implementing the suggested changes or what went wrong in your case. Another major component that we need to refer to is building relationships as a strategic tool. And there are several topics necessary to cover in this. First, what is relationship marketing? This can be seen as a philosophy that an organization has towards customer retention. Remember, if you build a relationship or relationship marketing or management, you might retain your customers. It can be defined as identifying, establishing, maintaining, and enhancing, and when necessary, terminating the relationship with customers and other stakeholders at a profit so that the objectives of all parties involved are met. And this is done by a mutual exchange and fulfillment of promises. Now we know what relationship marketing is, but what is customer relationship management, CRM? And this can be seen as the development and maintenance of mutually beneficial long-term relationship with strategically significant customers. From this definition, it can be seen that the focus of CRM is the customers who are regarded as strategically significant. In other words, those who continuously contribute to your service organization in terms of regular purchases. Then, as I mentioned previously, there's a way to determine the impact of your loyal and satisfied customers and how much they contribute to your service organization. And this can be done with a tool called the Customer Lifetime Value, the CLV. The logic of CLV is that the customer who stays with the organization will spend money with it over a longer period of time, usually a lifetime of the customer. For example, the same doctor that you've been using, the same pharmacy that you get your medicine from, and so forth. And then a quick illustration that you can see, recency, frequency, and monetization. So those components need to be present to really determine or establish a customer lifetime value to your organization. There are also several steps that you can follow to calculate the customer lifetime value for your service organization. And the first step is to calculate the revenue the organization will receive. This includes having the selling price and the quantity sold of the entire range of services offered. A second step involves having an indication of the cost associated with offering the service to the customer. It is important to know as it will impact on the organization's profits. Step three takes the outcome from step two, the net profit the organization receives at the end of the day and determining the present value of these future inflows. And this requires determining the profits for the period, for example, a month, a quarter, six months annually and then also determining the discount factors for each time period. And then the last step shows the present value and the inflows that the organization will receive from the customer and indicates the CLV. So you can have a look at any online source how to calculate CLV. 
In line with this concept is the customer profitability segments and the ones most suitable or most advice to target. And this will be determined by your organizational strategy. A simple illustration is you have four categories, the bottom being lead, then iron, then gold, then platinum. And you will also see on the right side, the least profitable consumers are at the bottom where the most profitable consumers are at the top. To continue on one of the elements of customer retention is, of course, loyalty programs. The purpose of any loyalty program is to collect information concerning the customer, such as demographics and their shopping behavior, while also encouraging loyalty behavior and increasing sales. You might think that all of these businesses have loyalty programs for you as the customer. Well, no, no, no. It's a very strategic tool that they use to gather information on their customers to tailor needs and to tailor specific shopping offers. For example, if you have a checkers loyalty card, a pick and pay smart shopper card, a desk game, a clicks card, you will get emails from them because you provided your personal information as well as your demographics. And then they can tailor their marketing communication to you in your email based on those information that you provided. So in doing this, the customer experiences are developed and the customer referrals are encouraged. Of course, it's, it's mutually beneficial because they can tailor their marketing and their service and product offerings. And then you as the customer receive discounts and cash back. What are the benefits of loyalty customers? So in short, customers benefit from these programs because they are able to receive rewards for their purchases while providing information to the organization regarding their personal lives and their behavior. The benefits they receive reflect their membership and engagement in a loyalty program. The organization benefits because there's more spending to get rewards and this leads to increased profitability. For example, in no other way or life will I necessarily purchase my groceries from Checkers because it's not the cheapest grocer. But since I get 40% cash back on my e-bucks from purchasing from Checkers, of course I will purchase my groceries from Checkers. So it is very important for organizations also to have a mutually beneficial agreement so that the spending to their specific organizations are increased and that there's a reason to have a specific loyalty program then the organization also benefits because you, they gather data on their customers and sell more or cross sell more as a result and this makes them very successful and then you will also see an infographic nine steps to a valuable loyalty program but of course as there are advantages there are also disadvantages of loyalty programs and mainly this can be from an organization's uh, perspective Loyalty schemes reward people for their behavior. They do not generate or contribute to increasing loyalty because now you have a smart shopper card and you have the checkers reward card. And then now whichever grocer has a better special this month, you will go to that one. So it won't generate or increase loyalty by no means. Loyalty programs affect sales levels, but do not contribute to genuine relationship building with customers because again, you will go for the cheaper option or sell, better sale depending on what is on offer a specific month. So you don't necessarily build a relationship with that organization. And then yes, customers are driven by the rewards and not for the quality of service or anything like that. For example, a relationship with the organization and it's very short term in nature because you look for the best deal each month. And then there's also privacy concerns because we know you provide a lot of personal information and then you are always scared that this gets um, sold to third parties and that's why we get so many spam emails but definitely privacy concerns for the customer. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. Hopefully now you are able to understand how to build customer relationship and loyalty and why it is so important to do so and not just focus on having the cheapest products.